Welcome to the conversation with Priya. Today, our guest is Manoj Palachandram, based in Bangalore and the leader from the IBM. In the previous avatar, Manoj has played technology leaders' roles in the cloud migration and in account management within IBM. Manoj has also had a 14 years with AT&T where he has the senior director of their Indian operation and has the center head of the AT&T Bangalore Center. Manoj's core strength lies in his building high-performing team, primarily in the application team like ERP, commerce, and infrastructure space. He also participated in Oracle Manufacturing Consultant, and he has gone on the executive and further lead several projects in the space across multiple product areas over the last 15 years of business, including being a vertical head and the center head of their India location for at and Manoj Balachandran has completed his BE in Mechanical Engineering and the College of Engineering in Gindi, Chennai, further which is in the MBA in International Business from the Symbiosis Institute of International Business. He's a self-proclaimed fitness freak and the total outdoor person during his free time. His other hobbies include dance and music and swimming and badminton. So help me to welcome Mr. Manoj Balachandran. Hello. Welcome to our show, Priya, Conversation with Priya, um, Mr. Manoj Balachandran. Um, good to see you in this show. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Priya. Nice to catch up with you. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for accepting our request. You've been very humble. I know you are a very busy man. Uh, it's very hard to get hold of you, but thank you so much for accepting our request and joining us today. It is really a pleasure interviewing you today. My pleasure. My pleasure being here. <laughs> Okay, I would like to listen for my, I mean, we, we already talked a lot, but I would like you to brief a bit about your journey, you know, where you are today. Awesome. Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Manoj Bala Chandran and I was born and brought up in Chennai. Okay. And I did all my education there in Chennai. I uh, did my schooling, did my engineering, been, um, been a total in and out a Chennai boy for the first, I would say for the first 23, 24 years of my life. Yeah. I joined Ashok Leyland after my engineering, worked there again in Chennai, uh, in the Chennai plant, uh, did, 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 did my mechanical engineering, so worked in the plant there, and then did my MBA post that, yeah. went on to do my MBA in international business uh, at Simbi in Pune. Okay. And uh, post that, I joined uh, Satyam. So Satyam Computers was at that point of time in two, 2001 was, was the third largest IT company. Yes, I remember in, that. <laughs> in India. And I joined there as an Oracle consultant, Oracle applications consultant. Um, and 2002, I kind of uh, uh, left Satyam to join a startup in Bangalore. That was a very... It was a very bold move from my end. Uh, folks were very uh, uh, wondering, like, what is going to happen? Why did we move from a third largest company to uh, a startup like this in Bangalore? And uh, uh, I, I was I was very confident about my skills. I was like, okay, I'm working in Hyderabad. My base is in Chennai. Uh, my my family is in Chennai. So this is going to take me closer home. So I moved yeah. to Bangalore. In App, uh, to AppShop in 2002. 2004, AppShop got acquired by a company called USI. Right. 2006, USI got acquired by AT&T. Right. 2016, the business I was handling in AT&T got acquired by IBM. Wow. So I've been getting acquired, acquired, acquired. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a great journey. I've learned a lot during those acquisitions. I've picked up I picked up new skills. I've uh, handled big, large accounts, um, and then uh, it's it's just been a little over one year that I moved from the business side, from the technology side, into the CSR space. Right. So uh. last July is when I actually moved. So I'm not a seasoned CSR professional. Yeah. And uh, I. I 
you know, 109 year old organization. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very prestigious thing to actually work here. The kind of opportunities you get, the, the kind of opportunities you get to hone your skill and to try out different things. It's just outstanding. So I was very lucky to get this opportunity to move to the corporate social responsibility side. And that's where I, um, I said, absolutely. I, I, I will definitely try my hands in CSR. And uh, that was my entry into a program called STEM for Girls, which we were handling in IBM, a large, a large initiative. It was one of the largest CSI initiatives of IBM in the world, actually. Wow. So I handled that. And then early this year, in 2020, um, I just went on to handle the complete CSR function for IBM India and South Asia. So that's my a very of of my professional life and uh, uh, and what I'm doing here in IBM and extremely blessed and happy to be here and uh, to be making the kind of impact and and changes in the in the community around. Very nice. Very few people have that kind of a courage which you took, you know. But sometimes uh, a leap of faith brings very different kind of. Uh, perspective of life and the journey you actually go through with you know totally totally i, I totally believe in I, and life is a risk how big you can you know and a lot of time it doesn't work out but eventually it will and that's whoever thought about 2020 turning out to be like this right no one no one uh, no one no one no one and the fact is that uh, the ones who are able to quickly adapt and quickly transform. I think they are the ones who will who will actually survive. So then I think absolutely right to your point that I think you have to be open and just say yes. Yeah. Yes to what life has to throw onto you, right? Yeah. And then because I don't think we are all born with all the right skills and all the knowledge of of what life has to offer you. Yeah. But it's your ability and your attitude to say yes everything yeah. and say yeah i know I, I can figure it out i can make it happen right i think if yeah. you have that if you have that uh, you know things will work out for you yeah and i always believe and, and, you know it's attitude which actually brings you makes that more difference than that only ability you know so absolutely. it's your attitude and there's no restriction in learning when when absolutely. it comes to the learning yeah. there's a nice anything. saying right your attitude determines your altitude yeah, just the mindset is at the Absolutely. right place, at the right time <laughs> as well. <laughs> that brings right. to my next question. Some critics argue that CSR distracts from the fundamental economics role of business and others argue that it is nothing more than superficial window dressing. In what areas do you think companies can develop a CSR strategy? That's, a, that's a quite a big argument, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> about the difference between what uh, CSR does and what kind of, uh, and and you and and you would know by now which which side of the debating team I would be on, right? <laughs> so I'm. I mean, in, in fact, in fact, if you look at um, CSR and the kind of impact, right? I mean, it this we need to look at CSR, especially in India. I'm talking about India, okay? Yes. So because the because the fundamental policies around CSR is different in different parts of the world. Yeah. So in India, um, we have the we have the uh, 2013 Companies Act, which made it mandatory for companies to kind of spend two percent of their uh, average last three years net profit on CSR. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Now the now now the question is why did why did India do it? Right. Well, there are, there was no need. They could have just yeah. uh, added that two percent as an extra tax. Yeah. And then say, yeah, I'm going to get that, and then we will. It will. It will come on to the, to the center's coffer. Yeah. And then they can then decide what what yeah. they can do. But, yeah. But I really, really think that it was. It was. It is one of the most amazing policies which we have. Yeah. Um, in India, because what it does is put the onus on the organization to decide what is right for the community in which they actually operate, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. there are SDG goals, the sustainable development goals, which have been, which have been identified. And you, I know the, the, the CSR policy also kind yeah. of mandates, or it kind of gives you that flexibility to say, you can do it in any, you can do any of your work in, in those SDG uh, aspects, right? So there are yeah. so many of these 
um, things which you can work on, education, scaling, environment, old age, sports, you know, you, you name it, and uh, rural development, yeah. all these things are actually available, right? Yeah. Now, it depends on the company's vision, the company's values, what do they want to achieve, what are they into, which actually determines um, um, a company strategy around CSR. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, uh, there, are, there are enough and more outstanding organizations in, 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 in India who are doing uh, like, like splendid work. Okay. Um, not, not, not really trying to say that IBM is one of them, but we are. Okay. So, so let me give you some stats. Okay. In the in, in the fiscal 2019, yeah. Um, if you look at uh, the number of companies who are eligible to do, um, who are eligible to spend the two percent, okay. Yeah. Now, um, out of out of close to 4,800 companies which are listed yeah. in the Bombay Stock Exchange, okay. Yeah. Um, close to around 1,900, 1,970, 1,000, or uh, close to around 2,000 companies yeah. kind of met the criteria. Yeah. to 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 spend that two percent okay, yeah. on on actually CSR, and if you look at the total number, okay, if you look at the aggregate of the total spend, it will be close to around close to around eleven thousand four hundred crores, right. okay, right. which they would have to have spent on mm. their on CSR. So imagine eleven thousand four hundred crores coming to the market in various industries in various uh, fields where they can really make a big impact. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and, and in fact, from the, uh, from year 2015, um, you know, we had close to around 6,800 crores or something, which was, which was actually part of the CSR spending that went up in, in four years time, right? 2015 to 2019, it went up to 11,000. So it's almost doubled. Wow. The number of almost uh, the, the well the kind of spending in the CSR space, right. okay, mm-hmm. and even the number of corporates who mm-hmm. have actually um, spend more than two percent, okay. In two thousand fifteen, it was roughly around fifty four percent, yeah. And two thousand nineteen, uh, it's sixty four percent of the corporate the eligible corporates have actually spent more than. Um, more than two percent of their of their profits on CSR activities. Wow. Okay, so if you look at it, right? If you look at all the areas now, uh, I know, and you said that you have come from Lucknow and and your background and uh, and, and and your father's focus on education, education, the educating um, girls and all that, right? So very rightly, uh, that's the kind of focus which even the development industry has got. That of yeah. all the different sectors. Education skilling has got the maximum amount of spending in yeah. CSR, okay, across all the all the companies which are there. Education, yeah. then comes healthcare, then comes rural development. In those, so the first sort of top three yeah. with regards to spending is always that, right? And yeah. that 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 aspect of it has not really changed. That uh, those three segments have really not changed over the last sure. so many years. Maybe this year with COVID. Uh, with COVID striking and um, you know, with the PM Cares Fund being yeah, uh, yeah. you know being being established, and there's a lot of lot of companies have actually donated their CSR funding into that in order mm-hmm. to help out with, with COVID relief, right? So mm-hmm. this year could be a slight aberration because we would all have to kind of change our funding pattern and ensure that we are doing what is right for the for the nation, for in order to help the people around, to help the um, to help the communities around, right? Even yeah. even, even yeah. IBM, you have done amazing work in terms of our COVID relief and uh, the, the yeah, stuff that, which we had that to was do. very interesting shift um, from the corporate, the contribution the corporate brought up in this particular situation in the crisis yeah. to actually support the whole social community nationwide. It was amazing support which we we were not seeing much in the past if you'll go three four decades behind if this kind of a corporate support we haven't seen much in the crisis yeah correct because the, so, i think the last i mean may maybe a early report which came in said close to around 82 percent 
or companies have actually gone ahead and and funded uh, uh, um, close to 50 50 plus of their total csr funding for the year on covid relief and that's amazing yeah okay, that that's yeah. Good. Uh, and i think it up, way, uh, went some of the corporates um i know they went ahead of their 2% you know they absolutely, out of absolutely. the box which is yeah. amazing amazing historical change happen in the corporate and and the the security sense of security in the community is there that people are they are not left behind they they have been Correct. taken care of which is really Correct. a good moral boost for the whole overall nation um Correct. that brings another question why by incorporating social environmental and economic cost and benefits into decision making social return on investment measures and accounts for a such broader concept of value what pros and cons can you think of applying this analytic tool to a company's decision making process so you're talking about the um, the social return on investment right that yeah, ROI yeah. That SROI SROI and what pros and yeah. cons can you think of applying the analytic tools to this yeah SROI SROI is very it's a it's a, it depends on which side of the coin you are okay so yeah. let me explain what uh, in terms of in terms of what that term actually means right i mean it SROI actually measures the value of the benefits um relative to the cost of achieving those benefits right so yeah um uh, if you if you look at it like if i spend $1 um is there a value which i get for 3 $3 well, what is the social value which i actually yeah. get for and is there a measurement which can be happened right so if i'm yeah. spending $1 am i getting a return of at least $3 from a social value point of view okay yeah. now yeah. now now um there are pros and cons of it okay so let me yeah. so let me give you an example of what we have done okay i can talk about what we have done in i <laughs> yeah that will be interesting yeah we have a program called the new collar employability pro program now that program what we do is that we go to non engineering colleges and uh, give them um a course on data analytics and cloud okay okay and you know because typically the focus is on engineering colleges you go to engineering colleges and give them okay you know because they are the ones who come into the it peak yeah, and they are an it company ibm so is famous to... for technology pickups yeah yeah so we decided that why should the non engineering students be left out hmm. okay they yeah. should also have job opportunities they should also have employability opportunities in sure. the in the tech field okay so hmm. we decided we co-branded a program with the nascom foundation we went uh, called the new collar employability program close to 2000 uh, close to 3000 kids had actually uh, taken part in it okay? okay so we spent close to 4 crores last year was the first year 4 right. crores in in, uh, in training those 3000 kids okay wow. so okay. if you look at the per cost per learner cost it comes up to around 13500 uh rupees per kid okay, okay. because okay. we are talking about 3000 uh, learners there now 70% of them got placed wow. because that's the that's the that's the model of the of the course also because you also work with uh, our partners who will help them get a get a get a job hmm. the average salary is around 15000 rupees a month 15000 yeah. rupees a month okay right so for by spending 13500 uh, rupees per kid you get around 15000 rupees per month okay yeah. so if you look at the annual rate you are talking about 1 is to 9.33 mm-hmm. okay that's the social return on value which you got okay yeah typically the research says that anything above 3 is a good number okay okay so that is the that is the social return on value which we got for one for one of these uh, pro programs which we had okay. yeah now yeah. now now obviously i think there is a it's it's it you can see it's just like any other metric like like the cost benefit analysis which you do in in company and you've been in the corporate world right so yes. you know how how you can make numbers work in your in your favor your favor <laughs> yeah absolutely so it's because it's all it's always a definition of what do you define as value yeah okay so 
the pro the pros while you say while you can uh, kind of evaluate a program based on the fact that okay i'm going to spend x amount per student and that student is going to get a value or get a salary that's measurable yeah okay but hmm. there are so many things which are not measurable like yeah. when you say social impact what do you mean by impact right what do you mean even now now we can always say now we are talking about this 15000 rupees a month as a impact direct impact right yeah. measurable yeah. monetary impact for a student but what if we also start taking into account the fact that um, you know because that student is now able to get 15000 uh, rupees he is now able to also educate his younger kids right his younger uh, sibling yeah okay and is there a value attached to it absolutely right because of the tax now which is now paying to the government yeah is there a increase in tax absolutely well there's an increase in tax for the, the for the economic growth pay. yeah economic growth right is there a way by which you can monetize it and then say yes there's so much more value yes you can right uh, so depending on uh, how you want to play the numbers i think you can make things work for you right yeah. so that yeah. soroi soi is a very there is there are no standards around it there are no standards around how you uh, how you kind of uh, measure it or how you kind of do it across the across the day across the table it also depends on project to pro- project now now if you're going to go and plant you know thousand trees right how do you measure the economic value for it how do you yeah. uh, measure the the social return on investment for it right because yeah. a sapling is a sapling now you can get a a nice tree a sapling for maybe 100 bucks 100 yeah. into 1000 yeah. trees now that's the value but yeah how do you measure the value for a tree which is going to be there maybe the value you will start to see the value over a period of time yeah right so uh, the tree uh, it's able to take make the soil better it's able to change the ecosystem of of that particular place water retention is better in that area because the soil is better so because of water retention being being better drought is not there so there is an economic uh, value for the drought or the lack of drought yeah right? so it's a very esoteric term and, and the, and the breathe system so health system increases and all that you know it's it's correct, a very correct, correct. Effect. and it is and it, there are various yeah. ways and you 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 can also then say hey there are negative outcomes also in some yes. of these cases right now for example the same the same case somebody has got 15000 bucks a month now because yeah. of that what wow, what if he starts taking drugs hmm. right now there is a downfall in that right yeah. because now there is an increase in, uh, in in money in his hand in the individual's hand yeah what is the cost of that what yeah. is the cost of that community so it's a very it's a very esoteric term okay yeah so it becomes very hard for a, for an organization to to stick to it and say this is a standard measurement yeah. for everything yeah so those are the yeah. pros and cons of sroi but mm. uh, essentially it's also very good to just have a thumb rule thumb rule on say okay if if you are able to really have a direct impact yeah. let's look at the direct impact let's it should be measurable there should be a value attached to it and if you have a value attached to it then you well you should be able to kind of uh, uh, measure that right so mm. Mm. so that's the that's the and and, uh, and you know, see that kind of a social impact where you know kids are getting into the ram path after getting the benefits they have given you know people say if they some people get too easy money they don't know how to handle it you know right, that's right. that's also comes to the more of a quality control of overall society you know um right. see like right now their cyber is not a problem but cyber mm. is a threat right mm. so mm. everything yeah. comes up with the more pros and cons always but how do we control it you know as we go on we learn and we make it more precedent right now like people are actually having a proper wing of ma- uh, managing the whole cyber security issues and you know cyber crimes and all those things which was not the problem say 20 30 years ago right right this right. kind of a problem Absolutely. was non existence and not in the thought of process of any <laughs> policing department <laughs> no this has been an age old uh, argument right about science being a boon or a bane right yeah. it all yeah. depends on whether how well you use an invention right nuclear yeah. 
nuclear power. Same, well, the same thing, you know, good or for bad, you can use it for both. Yeah, for sure. So, and, so you like know, that. by uh, generally CSR campaigns are associated with feel-good activities. Do you think companies must go beyond such activities and do activities that really make a difference to the environment and society? So, uh, you know, I, I, I personally don't believe that there's anything wrong in a feel-good factor, right? Of course, it feels good to go ahead and do something. And why can't we feel good while making a difference? Right? Yeah. So, I think anything which we do from, a, from any organization, any of these programs which we have, uh, where we actually go out and do something to better the society, it is a feel-good factor, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. feel-good factor depends on why Why are we saying it's a feel-good factor? Because the feeling only happens, feeling doesn't happen for an organization. Feeling happens for individuals in the organization. And who right? are involved in that directly, indirectly. Who are involved in that. So it essentially means voluntary, right? All the yes. volunteers, because they are able to go out and, and actually make a difference there. Because in yeah. if you look at it, um, when you are given an opportunity to put your life in perspective, that's when you feel how lucky you are and how yeah. fortunate you are, right? When you go out and see that, wow, well, look at those kids who are, who are unable to study and working the slums. Or look at that, that set of old people who are, who are, who are in the old age homes, right? Yeah. Um, how lucky are we, right? How lucky are we to to get what we have, to to work where we are, um, to to kind of have the relationships we have, to kind of have the monetary yeah. benefits we have, and stuff like that, right? Because we all have our complaints about life, and well, maybe I could have, maybe I would love to have hundred bucks more. Of course, everybody, everybody likes to have that. There is that always a seek of more. Yeah. Absolutely. And then we always tend to compare ourselves who are doing better and then say, wow, that person is doing so much better. Yeah. Man, I'm not doing well. Yeah. But then there is a whole millions of people who are doing worse off than you. Yeah. When this happens, when you when you ask employees in any organization to actually go out and volunteer, they get that perspective. They get that perspective to look at people who are doing so, so much worse off and say, mm -hmm. wow. Mm. I am lucky, right? Yeah. So yeah. it gives them gives them an ability to 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 be thankful and to be to be grateful to what life has actually given them. And uh, I think it it is it is an element of employee engagement as well. Very very important because uh, the feel good factor, as you rightly mentioned, is for the employees who are actually do, do, do doing. Yeah, and they bring that community concept. You know, otherwise you will feel isolated. Like you know, you are doing your job. I'm doing my job. I'm getting paid. Okay, thank you so much. You know. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> when you put things in perspective, right? For example, just recently, uh, two weeks back, I had taken my family to a friend's house in An in Andhra Pradesh, where he runs an orphanage and he, he, he runs a center for destitute women and all that. So my kids who are so used to having everything at home, right? I mean, everything yeah. is provided for them. Well, they don't really need to fend for themselves. When they see that there is a whole world which is out there yeah. where they do not have this ability to fend for themselves and, and uh, the kind of stories, the back stories which they have, we start putting things in perspective and say, wow, you know, yeah, I know it's it's a good life, right? Yeah. yeah. I may not have men, I may not have Netflix all the time, but I have Amazon Prime and that's good enough. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you kind of give when you when you when you when you really feel grateful, you yeah. really feel that uh, uh yeah. and, and the compassion the is very important in life. Yeah. I think whole social concept is started with the feel good factor you know right um right. The whole why people become more social worker and social act and you know helping people you know um it's i think it's all because of the feel good factor they were seeking for that that kind of Correct. fulfillment Correct. i believe there's a void which is there we all feel that uh yeah i need to give back i need to do something right yeah. uh, some life has given me so much or whatever powers you can say god universe energy whatever faith or or, or the you. Yeah. system you have right uh but but we always feel that huh, there should be something which i'm also doing for them yeah. right which is why 
um, we always feel good that when you give a uh, ten bucks to a to a beggar on the road, you all you feel huh? Yeah. Yeah. And something. So it makes a big difference. But what happens is that you also need to be careful. I wouldn't say careful, but the fact is that there are that there are people who look at it in a very short term. They go do a take a bunch of selfies, upload it online hmm. because that's a typical social media generation which we also have. Yeah. It's, it's instant. You you need instant gratification, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, well, that's fine as well. You know, whatever works yeah. for you. Any any small any small uh, uh, ability for you to give back is welcome because yeah. the world needs so much of love, so much of compassion, so much of uh, yeah. so much of support to yeah. make to make it a better place. So. So this feel good factor is it, like, of course, important in the social context for sure, you know, and it, I always believe that giving back to the society was always systematically, you know, and I remember it's it's an old saying and English translation is like, you know, you when you want to actually move forward, look people who are actually superior than you in all aspects, you know, and if you really want to check your life, then look back and see. Yeah. Yeah who else is there, then you can see the whole perspective where you want to reach and where you are better than yeah. you know, what better you are getting in this life. And that that's where you start appreciating things rather than complaining things, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. So in absolutely. your experience, what are the most successful CSR companies, um, you know, campaigns and companies are there? Oh, there are so many out of them. Outstanding <laughs> organizations who are doing Outstanding work, right? I mean, right from the big names which you see, right? Right from the Tatas and the Mahindras and the Infosys Foundation, the Wipros, the Ambujas. I mean, there are some outstanding work which people are doing, right? Yeah. Uh, so private, so private sector at the at the public sector level. I think um, I think most of the work is 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 um, the kind of impact which you're creating is just phenomenal. Okay. Mm. Um, that the Tata Group is something uh, has something called the Tata Strive, and we we actually partner with them in some of our programs uh, yeah. through IBM called Skills Build. Uh, Mahindra has got something called Nanhikali, where they actually go ahead and uh, you know help in the in support of uh, girls girl education uh, at a at a at, at school level. Infosys again, you you would have heard so much about Infosys Foundation and how yeah. Mrs. Sudha Mutri. So Doda Murthy, uh, um, I've been mean, for the last 25 years. You've been working on that, right? Ma- m- around malnutrition, yeah. yeah, improving healthcare, primary education, abandoned women, Indian art and culture, and all that stuff, right? Mm, mm. Um, yeah, Vipro again, they something have Vipro Earthian where they actually have two key outcomes which they actually work on. One is education and sustainability. Mm. Okay. Uh, like JSW is another company which uh, uh, focused on sports. Now, very few companies kind of uh, focus on 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 sports mm. and the development of sports. So JSW yeah. is another uh, and Dal Steelworks, right? And they yeah. really were focused on in in um, um, promoting sports and making sure that they develop future Olympians for yeah. India. That would so be there are, and IBM as an organization, we focus on education and skilling. Yeah, as a as a as a core focus area, so you know you look at all the top um, you know companies, they are all doing outstanding work, amazing work. What do you think about the smaller company? Like you know, there are a lot of startups happening in India, you know, and yeah. there are a lot of small SMEs. You know, in India, it is called MSME. Uh, how they are doing in the CSR area? Are they contributing, so, uh, or they should be introduced to these things? Uh, so, well, there is a um, uh, one is whether they are doing it at their own will. Okay? Yeah. Two is whether they are doing it as part of a mandatory requirement. Yeah. So the there are there are three there are one of the three cri- criteria which you would have to meet if you have to be mandated. Okay. One is yeah. that you would have to have a, um, a turnover of five thousand thousand crores. A turnover or a revenue of thousand crores. Yeah. Okay. Or you should have a market value of five hundred crores, or yeah. your net profit should be five crores or more. 
Okay. No. If if you meet any of these three criteria, then you are eligible to spend two percent of your average three years ka net profit on CSR. Okay. 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 So most of the times the startups they don't meet that criteria. Fall into that. Yeah. Right. The mandatory spending. Okay. Yeah. uh so as i said the numbers right out of close to around 4000 or 4800 companies which are listed in bombay stock exchange close to around 1900 1800 companies are eligible for it right? right eligible to be spending based on that so those those are all established companies those are all good big companies which are there yeah. okay yeah now most of these companies also work with ngos because mm. they don't do it on their own right yeah. they don't go out and do it on their own so in fact they work with ngos or npos non profit profit okay. organization to go ahead and, and execute these uh, projects at the ground level so yeah. there is the involvement of the small so the, the, an ngo could be a small ngo could be a could be a could be a ngo which is like 3 or 5 years old and then they could go ahead and you know we could take the help of them and and go out and make a difference there yeah. so there is a lot of that partnerships which actually happen at yeah. the at the ground level which uh, where where then uh, you know we are making use of their expertise at the ground level if sure. it is around it if it's if it's around the environment mm. right and we kind of make use of their um uh, foot on the ground yeah. and uh, their expertise also to go ahead and execute these things right so, right right very interesting point like you know but it is all about number but it's just that that if you fall into those category at least there is some uh, you know requirement has has taken place that people should contribute to that and to the csr activities which is really going to help a lot to the overall community and it will be a good economical boost and we can see the difference we, if you look at india in last 40 in 40 years like for five decades it's it's a huge difference you know we can actually see the growth the real growth yeah. happening yeah. and i'm pretty sure because of this and people mindset is also shifting because the kind of support they are getting compared to what our you know parents were getting or what we get and now what the current generation is getting you know no matter which way belongs to that question brings to my last question csr has assumed greater importance in today's world what is your take on the subject and what should companies to do to have winning csr strategies oh i mean um the see the conversation is actually well something called the triple bottom line concept okay it's about people profits and plan and planet so if you are able to have that uh thinking about people the thinking about your employees thinking about i mean obviously prop profits do matter in the organization uh, because that is one of the reasons why they why they exist and this shareholder value and all that stuff but also now thinking about planet so that's what they call it as the triple bottom line right people profits and and planet there in fact very interestingly last year ibm also conducted a worldwide global um study okay or uh, for all the organizations we call it the global purpose study and figured out where do consumers really yeah. find um one company how how do they choose between one company and another company right yeah 7% of the customers state that they will purchase goods based on a company's advocacy on social matters right okay. so imagine that yeah okay four out of the five respondents globally okay yeah. state that corporate should prioritize purpose as much as as much as profit which means 80% of the people says that purpose of the corporate is also very very important right yeah. Nine, 89% of us shoppers are likely to switch to a cost brand product right yeah. when so if they when they're choosing two separate um, brands and they have to choose one visa be another if this yeah. has got cost associated with it they are likely to choose that yeah. right so it becomes extremely important for organizations to not only create a product and but also a purpose yeah. okay so and because the shifting that this is shifting consumer and the business trends uh, yeah. over the last few years and you know I, I, that has also elevated this whole interest in in csr right yeah. and 
uh, as long as you are able to hold corporations accountable to serve a social purpose yeah. um then i think there's a lot more uh, positivity from the consumer's yeah. point of view also mm. right yeah. and, uh research has also shown that uh, if 58% of companies have a uh, clearly articulated purpose they have experienced 10% of more growth right because yeah. there is a more, more articulated uh, purpose which they are actually able to show up right because yeah. it drives consumer loyalty it yeah. drives employee engagement and then it provides impact to the stakeholders as well yeah the three things which are really important for any organization right yeah. so in terms of even in terms of even in terms of employee engagement so you can you can just imagine that right yeah. not only for the end consumer but also for your own employees yeah yeah there are even more hr research uh, research which has shown that in in across the world there are 67% of employees who are not actively engaged okay yeah they are they are they are not engaged at work you know actively disengaged at work okay yeah. the loss the loss of labor because of this um and unwanted turnover right because of the fact that there is close to 5.2 trillion dollars globally god it's huge 5.2 trillion dollars yeah. yeah okay and the research has also shown that 86% of surveyed employees expect their employers to provide opportunities to engage in the communities um um where where they are working in mm. so employees are wanting to go and employees are looking for that kind of engagement right yeah and just and to facilitate that exactly exactly so imagine an organization which has got a clear purpose defined you are able to engage your employees and hence because of the fact that you are able to also engage your employees your in- employee turnover is low yeah. and because of that you are able to uh, really cut down on your loss of productivity right yeah. so it's a, so it goes back to the same to that uh, three things which i talked about right yeah uh, profits and planet right yeah. when you are when you are when you are also thinking about the the sustainability of the organization really looking at how, what what we can do to improve the world around us i think it makes a it makes a huge difference so i think i think uh, uh, businesses around uh, just not in india but businesses around the world are making a huge impact yeah. uh, to see yeah. our, uh, in and terms of the calm, that's calm, why calm. This, yeah that's why the social enterprises are actually booming a lot you know if they yeah. people are coming with a social enterprise they have their own place to a place of growth and they are actually growing faster than the any generic company um Absolutely. people can see that difference and that's very interesting points and the fact you have brought up um, mr manoj and it is really interesting um uh, to hear you again you know i you know it it is really interesting point some people should actually consider how they can contribute to the society even if they are on the smaller scale of course there is no mandate you know but still people should think how they can fulfill you know satisfy themselves to bring those um, aspects do you think is there anything uh, you would like to get from the general public or is just the, is it something very control in the company um no i think see um and you're right uh, so there are there are there are one thing that the organizations are doing it right there are a whole set of people who are doing it at their own time yeah right? my organization i'm working in a small organization i may not uh, the organization may not have a clear cut csr strategy around but i as an individual i think there are so many of us who actually go out and do something on the side on the yeah. weekend right yeah. in the nearby school i go and teach a bunch of kids there i go and plant a cup of plants so whatever it is possible for you to make a difference because we are taking so much from the environment right yeah. and they say that uh, charity starts from home the plant this planet is our home right and yeah. if you have to if you don't take care of it we don't have another place to go right we, no, we are not not yet found <laughs> no. science fiction is not it come to a point where we are able to go to mars or yeah. or any other planet to stay so this is a this is our home for a for a long period of time yeah. if you don't take it i think it's going to be a it's going to be a big issue so uh, whatever it is right i mean home is uh, 
we are a unit of people, collective set of people who are there. So, and 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 as long as you are able to make a difference to at least one person, right? If you all if you all if you all make a resolve that every year I'll make a difference to one person in my life. Ah, uh, yeah, that that will satisfy your whole start purpose small. of your life. You start small, and uh, I'm sure that all of us will feel fulfilled when we when we look back um, December 31st when we say, "How did the year go?" <laughs> right? Yeah, we will all be. Yeah, you know, I think I made a I made a difference to. You know, one person. That person, I was able to help out in doing something. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, made a difference in their life, right? Start yeah, there. That's your own satisfaction. You know. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time today, and it was interesting and uh, to know your journey and your work you are doing. And of course, there are a lot of companies are getting involved, and it's a, it's really very important for us all of us to be involved and look after this planet because we have still miles to go before we sleep. isn't it robert frost absolutely so thank you so much priya it's been my pleasure to talk to you as well so really um uh, enjoyed this conversation so thank you and you have a great day thank you you too see ya